everyone. My name is Dr. Punazadeh. We've started an exchange program, so it's a sort of long-term uh, collaboration between Lisbeck University and uh, British College here in Nepal. We have our students from Lisbeck University to come to Nepal, experience the life of students here in Nepal, see the facilities here, and see um, collaborate with the students in terms of the project works in Nepal as well as in the UK. From the UK, uh, Lisbeck University, we have four students at level four, four students at level five. So we have four level four students from British College and four level five students. Having 16 students now on board, we formed four groups of four students. So we have group A, group B, group C and group D. Before we arrive to Nepal, uh, we've created a sort of group chat um, for all the students and they had to exchange ideas um, based on what is going on in the market based on the needs of Nepal, uh, the needs in the UK, and they had to form a sort of uh, project idea. Our project is adaptable. It's a smart billboard that uses a webcam to um, monitor the people uh, watching the billboard and it will do live changes to other adverts depending on their emotional reaction, their um, engagement in the advert. We're using Raspberry Pis, um, and we're going to we're going to connect to um, a webcam and use OpenCV AI a motion detection uh, and analyze each individual person, and then it goes, it's going to return the data to a user interface, so you can manually change the advert, but it will also have the option for you to change the advert um, automatically uh, based on what it believes is the most effective advert in that area and to that target demographic. Right, so we're um, deciding to use facial recognition with the Raspberry Pi. Um, and we're going to look at the re facial recognition on here. And we're also going to be linking it up with the database so that we can uh, use it as a clock-in system for work. So you would clock in using your face and it would link all that data back to a database and we'd be able to retrieve the data from there to see who's worked so many hours and just make it a little bit easier, really. Um, we're coding all on Python, and so it was OpenCV we're using um, for facial recognition, um, and Emily's going to look into that. And we're also coding through Python using the databases using DB Browser, um, and then we're all going to just combine it at the end to make the final product. This is for temperature and humidity sensing, and these are of either analog value or maybe digital value. You are using mobile application in order to control all the appliances in your place. For each appliance, you need to connect it to the relay. It is a board which is responsible for, for connecting different sensors. Now this is for communication purposes. This, this is also microcontroller. Ground here you can see the leveled. The socket is complete and you can see the indicator. So I'm connecting it to the digital pin 2. First I'll verify the code whether it works or not. Oh, there are plenty of errors. And at the loop we need to make sure that all these codes are running properly. Our project is about um, a real-time weather monitoring system which uses the DHT11 sensor, as you can see here, and it's used when this is being used with the Raspberry Pi. And it, if the temperature is above a certain threshold with a certain humidity, ideally a fan will be turned on with it. And in the console here, the the current temperature and the current humidity is printed out, and then it, then we make it sleep. That's the basics of the original project. Oh yeah, and. Uh, we will also implement an LCD screen which will echo the temperature and the humidity of the real time. <laughs> well, I have the, uh, the product for you. <laughs> So the FRWS um, would mainly be utilised in sort of workplace environments, um, registering your clock in and clock out times, um, and it would be registered everything that you register through this system. It can be used in universities as well, 
Now, uh, Shashan will be demonstrating on how this system will function. So in this use case, what I have done is that I will be registering my face and if I will launch an attendance camera, then uh, my attendance will be recorded in the database and it will record that well I, whether I was present or not in that particular day. So our project is basically, so our name of the project is basically a real-time traffic sign detection system using deep learning on the Raspberry Pi. And Mandu, we all know we are in Kathmandu, which is a beautiful place, place of temples, the city of temples. So it's Zam Mandu, our product name. And then it's an exchange program, obviously, from Nepal and UK. So we have UK and Nepal here. It, it was a, actually a great experience for me. This was the first time I was trying to organize such a, a trip or exchange program. I think um, it is quite successful. In terms of how it benefits our students in the UK, it's a sort of, to me, it's a sort of um, culture exchange. Obviously, with the technologies that we have, all internet, internet of things, every, internet of everything, everything is connected. We have social media, and uh, we know what is going on in terms of technology all over the world. But in terms of um, cultural exchange, I think it's very important for people to visit uh, countries, for example, European countries, to come and visit Asian countries and see the sort of cultures, the sort of great cultures that they have, the food, um, the sort of facilities that they have, um, the environment, um, the sort of agricultural um, items that they have, um, what they wear, how their daily life is, it's very important for the students in the UK because I think we are quite isolated um, in the UK. And also for people in Nepal, um, having a sort of exchange program, may maybe an exchange of culture as well as technology, I think it's quite beneficial for both um, people in the UK, students in the UK and students in Nepal. Um, to me, so far, it's been very successful, the four people in the team in each team, they've literally made it so far very well. Um, they match with each other, they now communicate very well. They start working together as groups, so a great team working is going on in between uh, all the team members. And it seems that their knowledge actually complement each other. Um, so students here having the same curriculum that we teach in the UK, so I was expecting to have sort of same knowledge, but sometimes I see that students here have really, really great knowledge of, uh, for example, Raspberry Pi, um, which I don't think that they used it here in, um, in Nepal, um, in TVC. But it, it's, it's, it's sort of great exchange of knowledge and um, great exchange of um, culture. Um, is it going to continue? Yes, I hope so. This is going to continue. I hope that it goes forward. This is the first year that we are going through this exchange program and hopefully it will continue and it will come uh, more often to Nepal and hopefully we have students from Nepal to come and visit LBU in the UK, see the culture, see our facilities, how we run uh, the labs, how we communicate with our students, what are the rules in the UK and so on. I think it is great um, and quite beneficial for both LBU as well as TBC. In terms of my overall experience, I have to say that I've been amazed with the source of cultural um, influence that people have in Nepal. Um, very sort of friendly environment. We felt as we knew people here for such a long time. The hospitality was great. Students have, have been amazed. All of them really enjoyed their time so far in Nepal. Uh, we have done some sightseeing. We went to the market. We've seen the sort of culture here in Nepal. Um, I think it's overall, it, it has been a great experience and hopefully we continue this, this sort of exchange program. Thank you very much.